What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is all about spinning kicks. More specifically, why you might not be feeling awesome when you're throwing them. Little issues that people have which hinder their ability to throw those spinning kicks like Raymond Daniels or Steven Wonderboy Thompson. So right after the intro, we're diving into five or six pointers to make your spinning kicks so awesome. All right guys, here we go right away. Point number one, we are talking about mistakes people make when they throw spinning techniques. The first one is they over rotate. What do I mean by that? Well, if I'm coming around for a spinning side kick or a spinning hook kick, I turn and I go really anywhere past this point, I've over rotated. Now it might seem like more of a spin is gonna create more power and that's better, but that is incorrect. You don't wanna do that. When I throw my spinning technique, I wanna make sure I almost stop at about this point. I won't, don't wanna rotate any further than that. It's perfect for my spinning side kick and for my spinning hook kick, same thing. Over rotation, specifically through the upper body, is just gonna hinder everything. So make sure that when you do your spin, you're more or less stopping there. It might seem like it doesn't work, but let me demonstrate quickly. An over-rotated kick, when I go too far, it looks like this, specifically a spinning side kick, I over-rotate, and I end up in this position where I kind of jam myself, and if I miss, if this guy steps backwards, I'm just gonna fall straight through. A proper rotation is me just doing a slight turn, and then right from there, execute. Or same thing on my spinning hook kick, I don't need to go all the way through and huck my chest. I just wanna go here, let my leg follow, and then at the end, I can finish it off and land with a rotation through my body at the very end. But early over rotation, no good. Next up, common mistake, people lead with their chest. It's almost like the over rotation, they forget about what should be leading, and that is my chin and my eyes. That's gonna be the thing that allows you to actually land this kick. So if I just get so enthusiastic about spinning and forgetting that my head should be turned and I should be looking, my head should lead, not follow my upper body. I turn, I rotate my head, my body's facing this way, I continue with the kick, and then I can come around and make sure that I'm going to actually hit the target. You can have the best spinning side kick in the world, but if you don't lead with your head, you don't know what you're hitting. As soon as I look, I can land. It's that simple, rotate the head first and then let the rest of the body follow up. Next up, we are talking about the subtle lean back of the head. When I throw my spinning kick, I don't wanna stay straight upright and try and throw it, but I also don't want to overdo this and throw my head way down. There's a subtle middle ground which we want to find. When you see most of the good guys, Raymond Daniels, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, throw these techniques, the head tips very slightly, just to there. Not too far, not upright, just enough that I can get my weight backwards and my head kind of counterbalances my leg. Very important to start understanding what works best for you. Throw your kick, lean your head back a little bit and just find that perfect point. I know for me that it's right about there. When I put my head there and I go to kick, I'm gonna have good balance. I'm able to extend that kick out and have everything feel stable and not falling one direction or the other. Our next point is very similar to the idea that when I throw a punch and I hit somebody, the punch is not done. We're only halfway done. We still have to do the full reed chamber. Well, it's just as important for spinning techniques, if not more important, because you can have the best kick in the world right up to here, but when you throw and then you make contact, if you don't have a good reed chamber and you're able to come back to a proper fighting stance, you're gonna fall over and the kick will always feel awful. So remember that you have to be able to hit the target and come right back to where your foot started. It doesn't matter if I hit and I bounce back the same way that I went into it. That happens when I throw a spinning side kick. I strike and I come right back to here. Or if I throw a spinning hook kick that misses, my foot started here and it also 
finishes right there. You have to make sure that you don't get too enthusiastic about just landing the kick and forget about the re-chamber. Once you sort that out, your spinning kicks will feel so much better. The next mistake that many people make when they're trying to execute their kicks is a lack of understanding about distance. Distance is so important. If I put myself here, a spinning kick is gonna be very difficult to pull off unless I have the ability to jump and correct. But also, being way back here, I know I can't land without again jumping in. So you need to have that perfect understanding of distance just the way you would when you jab. When you jab, you know, okay, I can touch the guy. Okay, I'm a little far away. Oh, I'm probably too close. I should throw a hook instead. When you understand that, it's much easier to land the jab. Same thing with your spinning techniques. You need to practice time and time again until you know the exact distance. Right now, I don't even need to look at Bob. I just know I can land a spinning hook kick right from here. Let's check it out, see if I'm right. Just outside of range, I do my little lean back, which we already talked about. I come around, perfect. That's just because I've done it so many times. You guys want to make sure you really understand your distance. That'll make your kicks so great. And the final tip I have for you today, which is something that I don't think enough people do, is practicing, number one, hitting the target and bouncing out of it. What do I mean by that? Well, when I hit the target, I come around, I strike, I want to practice hitting and coming right back the same way, or the same thing on a spinning hook hit. I want to come around, strike and bounce right out of it. I want to get very good at doing that because when I actually connect on somebody, I want to get used to pulling out of it in that way and make sure that I'm right back to my balanced stance. But that is not enough. We also need to practice going through. Going through is going to give us that ability to number one, if we miss, make sure that we're able to rebalance and number two, to build our power. Because if I always practice hitting something, I go, okay, I hit and I pull, I hit and I pull. I start focusing too much on my balance and not so much on the power. But if I throw my spinning hook kick and I come whoosh right through, that's gonna be the knockout technique. I don't wanna always just hit something solid and stop. So Bob's perfect because his head is flexible. It doesn't matter what I do, my foot's going through. But if you have a solid bag, practice clipping it with your toes so you can go right through in one motion. Having the ability to hit something and come out of it the same way you went in, but to also go right through in one motion, it's gonna help you so much on your spinning kicks. Now you can do both aspects of missing a kick and landing on a solid target. So spinning kicks, fun, dangerous, awesome for spectators. You wanna get these techniques down. Utilize the tips I gave you today, guys, and the spinning kick will just be that much more on point. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to check out some of the other ones where I talk about mistakes you might be making in certain techniques and how we can iron those out. You guys had fun today, give the video a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. Train hard guys, I'll see you back here soon for another video.